Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video I'm going to be talking about the new controller setup in Velocidrone. If we go to the controller tab you can see the new panel that is for doing controller setup and if you want to use the old panel or the previous panel that's still there and that's under this button under legacy setup panel so that takes you to this one which is the original setup that we had for transmitters in Velocidrone. So if we go into the new system, to explain what we have in front of us here, on the left hand side we have all of the axes that are being detected from my currently connected FR Sky Tyrannus joystick. You can see all these axes over here and if I move the sticks you can see the throttle there is moving in the top left axis and if I move the roll you can see that one and then pitch and then your and so on. So you can see your axes over here. You can also click on these and it will bring up your calibration for that axis if you want to do a specific calibration of some kind. But in this new setup you don't generally need to do that for the main sticks. You may need to do it for other functions but for the main sticks all of that is done for you. So those are your axes. On the right hand side here you have buttons. So if your controller has the ability to press buttons which the Tyrannus does then you'll see those over here. Now there are a hundred buttons here because there are a hundred buttons that can possibly be sent across an interface to the sim and we don't know where manufacturers are going to configure their buttons to be. Some manufacturers start at 30 it, it can be very difficult to work out where they're going to be which is why there are a hundred buttons on there so we can capture every single type of controller and where they may place their buttons. Now if I flick my back switch here you'll see that this button here is turning on and that's the only button that I've got configured on my Tyrannus at the moment. Okay so the other thing here is that it's all color coded so when you assign these functions here to an axis or to a button then color coding will happen in order to indicate to you what function is assigned where and you can also double click any of these buttons to unassign them so if I was to assign race start for instance to this button here I would just click race start and then click the button and now you can see the color coding there of that assignment and if I switch it you can see it lights up to show you what thing is connected and if I want to undo that assignment I just double click it and that undoes it Okay, and you can do that for axes as well in exactly the same way if I want to put race start on an axis. So for instance over here where my cursor is, you can see that is the axis that is being switched. And therefore if I just turn that one on, fourth up from the bottom, if I put race start on that one like that, then you can see that that one is now color coded to match and you can see this button over here has gone red because it's unassigned effectively. Okay, and I can double click that to unassign it again and it goes back to orange. In terms of setting up the sticks, that is now much, much simpler. The only thing you need to know about setting up the sticks is that it's going to ask you to follow this stick display up here. And when you do that, you need to be very positive in how you do that. So when it asks you to move the sticks, it wants a very positive reasonably fast movement of the stick for it to be able to detect what you're going what you're what you're doing if you move the stick very very slowly then there's a chance it won't detect properly because it's looking at a change in the stick and it's looking at the speed of that change in order to work out what you're doing so you have to kind of get into the window so you don't have to be like super fast but as long as you're reasonably fast in moving the stick it will pick it all up so let's assign our sticks then. So we click the assign sticks button and now it changes to this. So basically it's asking us to just follow the sticks. So I'll do that. Okay, and now it wants me to center the sticks. So I'll do that. Now it wants me to follow the sticks again. So this is where we need to be very positive in our movement of the sticks. We don't want to be moving them really slowly here. So for roll, I want to do that. Pitch your throttle and then it asks me to center the sticks again like so and that wants me to move the roll stick that one pitch your throttle and now you can see that 
our controls are all assigned. You can see the quad up here is copying my movements and all of the dead zone, sensitivity, calibration, absolutely everything has been done for me. I don't need to do anything else. That is my quad set up for flight. The only things that I may want to do now is start assigning some of these other things. So for instance on my Tyrannus, my camera angle is normally on this dial here. If I move that dial you can see it's this one over here the one above these two here so if I want to put camera angle on that one I just click camera angle and then click that one and then that one is now assigned as you can see to camera angle so very very simple very very straightforward much harder to get this wrong than the legacy interface pretty much the only issue we've seen so far in using this particular setup is not moving the stick positively enough or quick enough when it asks you to move the sticks for your various follow the sticks section of the transmitter setup and as long as you're reasonably quick in doing that then it should all work fine if it doesn't work then you can just run assigned sticks again you can run it as many times as you like and you know if you've just got one stick wrong we didn't move it quite fast enough and it detected it in the wrong direction or something like that then uh, you can just run it again and that will fix the issue okay so that's pretty much it that's all I wanted to say about this it's a much much simpler way of setting up your sticks and hopefully it will help a lot of our new customers get their transmitters set up much more quickly and easily than our old legacy setup panel if you do go into the old legacy setup panel you actually see the things that you've defined here so they're all set up as well so you can play around with it with that in here as well it's all cross compatible okay that's it and i'll see you on the next video